i. The cosmological argument, or argument from change in nature. This is not properly an argument from effect to cause, for the proposition that every effect must have a cause is simply identical, and means only that every caused event must have a cause. It is rather an argument from begun existence to a sufficient cause of that beginning, and may be accurately stated as follows. Everything begun, whether substance or phenomenon, owes its existence to some producing cause. The universe, at least so far as its present form is concerned, is a thing begun, and owes its existence to a cause which is equal to its production. This cause must be indefinitely great. It is to be noticed that this argument moves wholly in the realm of nature. The argument from man's constitution and beginning upon the planet is treated under another head, see anthropological argument. That the present form of the universe is not eternal in the past, but has begun to be, not only personal observation but the testimony of geology assures us. For statements of the argument, see Kant, Critique of Pure Reason, Bones Transal, 370, Gillespie, Necessary Existence of God. 8 colon 3444, Bibsack, 1849 colon 613, 1850 colon 613, Porter, Hum. Intellect, 570, Herbert Spencer, First Principles, 93. It has often been claimed, as by Locke, Clark, and Robert Hall, that this argument is sufficient to conduct the mind to an eternal and infinite first cause. We proceed therefore to mention. 1. The defects of the cosmological argument. A. It is impossible to show that the universe, so far as its substance is concerned, has had a beginning. The law of causality declares, not that everything has a cause, for then God himself must have a cause, but rather that everything begun has a cause, or in other words, that every event or change has a cause. Hume, Philos, Works, 2 411 square, urges with reason that we never saw a world made. Many philosophers in Christian lands, as Martino, Essays, 1 206, and the prevailing opinions of anti-Christian times, have held matter to be eternal. Bound, Metaphysics, 107, for being itself, the reflective reason never asks a cause, unless the being show signs of dependence. It is change that first gives rise to the demand for cause. Martino, Types, 1 291, it is not existence, as such, that demands a cause, but the coming into existence of what did not exist before. The intellectual law of causality is a law for phenomena, and not for entity. See also McCosh, Intuitions, 225241, Calderwood, Phylos, of Infinite, 61. Per contra, see Murphy, Scient. Bases of Faith, 49, 195, and Habit and Intelligence, 1 5567, Knight, Lect. On Metaphysics. Lect 2, page 19. B. Granting that the universe, so far as its phenomena are concerned, has had a cause, it is impossible to show that any other cause is required than a cause within itself, such as the pantheist supposes. Flint, Theism, 65, the cosmological argument alone proves only force, and no mere force is God. Intelligence must go with power to make a being that can be called God. Diamond, Theistic argument, the cosmological argument alone cannot decide whether the force that causes change is permanent self-existent mind, or permanent self-existent matter. Only intelligence gives the basis for an answer. Only mind in the universe enables us to infer mind in the maker. But the argument from intelligence is not the cosmological, but the teleological, and to this last belong all proofs of deity from order and combination in nature. Upton, Hibbert Lectures, 201296, science has to do with those changes which one portion of the visible universe causes in another portion. Philosophy and theology deal with the infinite cause which brings into existence and sustains the entire series of finite causes. Do we ask the cause of the stars? Science says, fire mist, or an infinite regress of causes. Theology says, granted, but this infinite regress demands for its explanation the belief in God. We must believe both in God and in an endless series of finite causes. God is the cause of all causes, the soul of all souls, center and soul of every. Sphere, yet to each loving heart how near. We do not need, as mere matter of science, to think of any beginning. See, granting that the universe most have had a cause outside of itself, 
It is impossible to show that this cause has not itself been caused, i.e., consists of an infinite series of dependent causes. The principle of causality does not require that everything begun should be traced back to an uncaused cause, it demands that we should assign a cause, but not that we should assign a first cause. So with the whole series of causes. The materialist is bound to find a cause for this series, only when the series is shown to have had a beginning. But the very hypothesis of an infinite series of causes excludes the idea of such a beginning. An infinite chain has no topmost link, versus Robert Hall, an uncaused and eternal succession does not need a cause, versus Clark and Locke. See Watili, Logic, 270, New Englander, January. 1874-75, Alexander, Moral Science, 221, Flydra, Die Religion, 1 160164, Calderwood, Moral Philos, 225, Herbert Spencer. First Principles, 37, criticized by Bown, Review of H. Spencer, 36. Julius Muller, Doct. Sin, 2 128, says that the causal principle is not satisfied till by regress we come to a cause which is not itself an effect. To one who is cause a sway, aids to study of German theology, 1517, even if the universe be eternal. Its contingent and relative nature requires us to postulate an eternal creator, Diamond, theistic. Argument 86, while the law of causation does not lead logically up to the conclusion of a first cause, it compels us to affirm it. We reply that it is not the law of causation which compels us to affirm it, for this certainly does not lead logically up to the conclusion. If we infer an uncaused cause, we do it, not by logical process, but by virtue of the intuitive belief within us. So substantially secreton, and well, in indications of a creator, and in hist of scientific ideas, 2 321, 322, the mind takes refuge, in the assumption of a first cause, from an employment inconsistent with its own nature, we necessarily infer a first cause, although the palaretiological sciences only point toward it, but do not lead us to it. d. Granting that the cause of the universe has not itself been caused, it is impossible to show that this cause is not finite, like the universe itself. The causal principle requires a cause no greater than just sufficient to account for the effect. We cannot therefore infer an infinite cause, unless the universe is infinite, which cannot be proved, but can only be assumed, and this is assuming an infinite in order to prove an infinite. All we know of the universe is finite. An infinite universe implies infinite number. But no number can be infinite, for to any number, however great, a unit can be added, which shows that it was not infinite before. Here again we see that the most approved forms of the cosmological argument are obliged to avail themselves of the intuition of the infinite, to supplement the logical process. Versus Martino, study, 1 colon for 16, though we cannot directly infer the infinitude of God from a limited creation, indirectly we may exclude every other position by resort to its unlimited scene of existence, space. But this would equally warrant our belief in the infinitude of our fellow men. Or, it is the argument of Clark and Gillespie, see ontological argument below. Schiller, die Gross der Welt, seems to hold to a boundless universe. He represents a tired spirit as seeking the last limit of creation. A second pilgrim meets him from the spaces beyond with the words, stay. Du siegelst umsonst, wo dir unendlichkeit, hold. Thou journeyest in vain, before thee is only infinity. On the Law of Parsimony, see Sir W. M. Hamilton, Discussions, 628. 2. The value of the cosmological argument, then, is simply this. It proves the existence of some cause of the universe indefinitely great. When we go beyond this and ask whether this cause is a cause of being, or merely a cause of change, to the universe, whether it is a cause apart from the universe, or one with it, whether it is an eternal cause, or a cause dependent upon some other cause, whether it is intelligent or unintelligent, infinite or finite, one or many, this argument cannot assure us. On the whole argument, see Flint, Theism, 93130, Mosley, Essays, Hist and Theol. 2 414444, Hedge, Ways of the Spirit, 148154, Studian and Critican, 1876 931.